Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith and in today's video I wanted to talk about an experience I had where it was kind of a mistake that I made but it's it was pretty much unavoidable and it's something that you may do yourself if you're an EEG technologist and I just want to talk about it. So what I did was I hooked up a patient and they were a little bit uncooperative I would say. And you might see this you know, pretty often in this field because we're doing EEGs on people with altered mental status all the time. So they were essentially like sideways, pretty much half halfway out the bed. They were laying on their side. And so that means I was able to get the, the midline on good, the ones in the middle and the ones on the right side good, which is great. But if he's uncooperative and laying on their side and they're not letting you get to the back of the head, putting on the left side is going to be a little bit difficult so I kind of just had to do my best to kind of like just slide 01 the electro that's in the back on the left just kind of like slide it under the little towel roll to try and get it in the it's not exact but if they're uncooperative and they're fighting you about it it's impossible to get a exactly perfect placement you know that's what you want to shoot for but reality is reality you know some patients aren't gonna allow you to do that now i noticed something very peculiar when i was running the eeg so while doing an eeg you do these things called activation procedures and one of them is called photic stimulation now all that is is you shine a bright light into the patient's eyes and normally they can have their eyes closed and you're going to want to see something called photic driving now photic driving all that is is every time there's a light flash there will be a wave on the EEG right in line with the flash of the light now either you'll see that which is called photic driving on both sides of the head so O1 and O2 which processes visual information you're gonna be seeing waves in line with each flash of the light that's called photic driving Another thing that's normal is if you don't see photic driving, if you just don't see it at all. Now, something that's abnormal that I saw in this patient specifically as it relates to photic driving is if you have the photic driving with each flash, you see a wave on the EEG on the right side, but on the left side, you're not seeing it at all. That's called asymmetric photic driving. So it's asymmetric. Symmetric photic driving is when you got it on both sides, O1 and O2, but asymmetric is when you see it on just one side and not the other. Now I'll show you a picture of the EEG of what I saw and I was like, hmm, this is peculiar. Why are we seeing asymmetric photic driving? Well, some reasons for that, for a actual abnormality, it would be like, for example, if they had a tumor just on one side of the back of the head, it could be causing asymmetric photic driving, which is why if they see this asymmetric photic driving, this abnormal response, the doctors are gonna to wanna to order a bunch of tests like a CT of the head, an MRI, to see, whoa, what is, what is going on? What is causing this asymmetry in the photic driving? Now, this wasn't caused by a tumor, at least I don't think. I think it was caused by EEG tech error. My error, Jared Beckwith, the EEG guy made an error. But the fact that I am able to capture this error is what's what's important really so i realized i'll show you guys a picture of it so there was driving photic driving on the right side but not on the left side and the reason for that was the right side was totally easy to do because the patient was laying on the left side so the right side was completely exposed i could totally see what i was doing but the patient when i was putting on the left side the patient was you know halfway out the bed laying on the left side so i couldn't uh, it, I kind of had to blindly put the electrode in the best spot that I believe possible for O1 and maybe maybe T5 too which is right next to O1 probably wasn't in the most perfect position that I would like now if your electrodes aren't placed perfectly this is why it's important to mark and measure all your patients but if they're uncooperative and you can't really put it in the perfect spot you know this is a reason to know about this asymmetric photic driving caused by not by a tumor but by EEG tech error it was my error and it's good that I noted it I noted it on the EEG for the doctor I put it in the report that it was difficult to place these specific electrodes and a lot of the time the hardest ones to place are the ones in the back O1 and O2 so 
especially with someone who's halfway out the bed, maybe rolling around stuff. So definitely double check your work. And if you do come into this uh, difficulty, definitely document it on the EEG for the doctor so they know, hey, this probably isn't some crazy tumor thing just on one side of the head. It's probably just tech error, if the tech says it themselves. But if not, if you did a perfect setup and everything, you're still getting this asymmetric photic driving response, then also note that as well. So then the doctors can probably escalate it further and do more testing other than an EEG to help figure out what the heck is going on and causing this abnormal response. This was just my quick little video just because I had this experience today and I thought it would be good to share with you guys so you don't make the same errors as I do. And when you do make the error like I did due to patient uncooperativeness, you're able to recognize it and document it on the EEG so the doctor knows what's going on. Oh wow, this is much better lighting. I should have been facing this way. But too late guys, the video's over. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have a great neurodiagnostic week and I'll see you all on the next video. Make sure you hit the like button. I love you all. I'll see you again.